It's not an on-rail shooter. The freedom to go wherever you like, the freedom to stop where you like, the freedom to make camp where you like, but it's not only the freedom of where you go, it's how you go. Fable the Journey is a Kinect spin-off title that features vital information to the overall plot, lore, and context for Fable 2 and 3! If you're only interested in the story, then skip to the stand and I'll see you in a bit. You are the controller. And this controller sucks! Meet the Dweller Gabriel with the power of horse friendship and magic gauntlets. Gauntlets have extended cuffs. Gloves. Don't. You blast some stuff and ride a horse. There's some side activities like very simple puzzles. Hell yeah! Back to grade school! You can find chests with collectibles and optional stops. And while riding, you can collect these colored orbs. In hindsight, you don't really need those. These are experience orbs, which you also get by doing set side activities or defeating enemies. Like a mixture between Fable 2 and 3. You can use the gained experience to immediately level up an ability. These very few upgrades are actually useful for a change, except for the horse upgrades. The collectibles will help you gain access to achievements and bonus content for Fable Heroes. Remember Fable Heroes? Combat time! Gabriel sucks! So your only option is some scrubby magic. So let me get this straight. Magic was broken in Fable 1. You broke it even more in Fable 2. You completely destroyed it in Fable 3. And now you decide to fix it in a way that would have actually worked for any of the Fable games. Oh damn, please, no, don't screw this up! It's basically a stamina meter that decreases if you use your lightning spell. It always recharges, so timing is important. It would have been a good fix if it would have applied to every spell. You have two more attack spells, the fireball and the shard. The fireball deals more damage and hits multiple targets on redirection. And the shard deals even more damage and hits even more targets on redirection. Both of which don't use any mana. Your push spell can flick enemies around and block any attack that comes your way. It also doesn't require mana, so this is spammable and glitchable. It gets an upgrade near the end game to become an anti-evil anti -evil push, push spell, spell! Which eliminates a protective shield around corrupted enemies. Yes, that means almost nothing can harm you. As long as you do this. I'm bringing the pain! I literally physically injured myself while playing the journey. And while that is completely my fault for playing more than two hours per session and ignoring the warning of Kinect, the fact remains that this is a game that has a pretty good chance of f***ing you up, simply by how you're supposed to control it. Being stubborn is one thing, but making a game uncomfortable to play is a completely different issue. This game has a huge problem. And that comes in form of Kinect randomly deciding to stop f***ing working! There was no rhyme or reason to any of this and it was mildly frustrating. Boilers! Gabriel likes to think of himself as a hero, but... I'm ready for whatever we run into. Bumpy roads, bit of drizzle... Stuff of legends. He sucks! While traveling with the caravan, Gabriel falls asleep and a thunderstorm cuts him off from the rest of his tribe. Shortly after, he reluctantly helps an injured Teresa and has to flee from a demonic catastrophe known as the Devourer. His horse Saren is lethally injured and Gabriel panics trying to save her. Teresa then tricks him into taking the test of three ancient heroes in order to acquire healing magic. The old heroes explain that the bloodline of the first Archon is dead, 
and they have been looking for a way to create heroes with the magic gauntlets. You're a hero, Gary! I'm not a hero! After the events of Fable 3, the neighboring country of Samarkand suddenly started a war. The protagonist of Fable 3 is missing and hopefully dead! Teresa also finally tells us about the primary antagonist, the Corruptor. To refresh your memory, William Black was the first Archon of the Old Kingdom. After establishing the Old Kingdom, he felt the evil in himself growing stronger every day. He entered the realm of the Void and shed himself of his dark side, which resulted in him turning undead and losing his humanity, while his dark side remained in the Void and eventually became something much, much more twisted and powerful. The Corruptor felt cheated. Someone stole his rightful place as the ruler of the Old Kingdom. And when he tried to enter Albion through the Spire, he was stopped by the three ancient heroes. The Spire was destroyed, the Old Kingdom got axed and the heroes died. The end. Not really, because here comes Teresa! After Fable 1, she became obsessed with killing anyone or anything that does evil before she started to adapt her modern philosophy of there can't be a victory without any cause ever. She dropped some pretty heavy hints that she was the one who killed Lucien's family prior to Fable 2. You cunt! Now we're finally here. William's bloodline and all the other heroes are dead. Albion has no ruler. An evil overlord whom legends consider to be the strongest being to have ever lived sends his lieutenants to kill everyone and our very last hope is the reluctant, juvenile, inexperienced Gabriel. I thought you might say that. Teresa, you done fucked up! Meet Fergus. He's a great character and you spend some of the best atmospheric moments of the entire game with him. Until you team up, kill the devourer and he dies. Rinse and repeat with this uh, curious, very uninteresting, lustful female certainly not about to die against a demon called the Temptress. Gabriel then finds his old tribe and his best friend dying. He embraces being a hero and moves on. Also, a bunch of trolls appeared sometime, somewhere and they were... Honestly, the best boss fights in this game. Teresa then forces Gabriel to leave his lifelong companion behind against the hordes of corrupted monsters. Wait, the game is playing itself? I hate you. Teresa uses herself as a vessel to seal the rift that allows the corrupter to enter the lands. While Gabriel jumps to the core to accept his destiny. It's a literal heart? The spire is destroyed, the rift is sealed and Gabriel is the new guardian of the Spire. He also suddenly adopts Teresa's philosophy despite disagreeing with her a minute ago and he also has those glowy eyes of Lucien and Teresa. One final time, Gabriel tells us that he'll wait and watch over the world, waiting for the right moment to prepare it against the Corruptor once more. No final boss! Because why would we freaking need a final boss in the goddamn Fable game? Fable the Journey takes about 6 to 9 hours to finish. Unless you want to go for a high score. There are glitches, but the soundtrack is alright and the graphics look good for the Xbox 360. When it works, it feels like little sugary sparkly bits that rip your enemies to shreds within a cloud of seawater. When it doesn't work, then it feels like another unpolished, barely working, shitty Kinect title! 